Hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com, and today I'm going to be going over that slow mo muzzle flash that you saw in the intro, and you probably also saw in the shooting pool sketch that I refuse to shut up about. Before I get started, um, I feel like I should just point out that no one has ever actually seen slow motion. We've seen cinematic versions of it in movies, and of course we've seen you know, slow motion footage shot by high speed cameras of things that are meant to impress us, but the average person isn't going to know what slow motion looks like for every single thing, you know? We don't know what everything in the world looks like in slow motion. So for this effect, I say don't worry too much about making it look real. Just try and make it look cool. And besides, you know, if you have slow motion in your short film or whatever, it's probably supposed to be a stylized shot anyway. So just don't worry too much about it. Anyway, here we have this footage, which is already in slow motion, but it's not really in bullet time. You'd think if you're gonna see a bullet moving, probably everything else is going to pretty much be standing still because a bullet is the fastest thing in the universe. So I'm actually gonna time remap this footage so that most of the motion happens at the beginning, like that part's not slow motion and the end part is gonna be real still. So this is actually pretty easy to do. Just right click on this and click time, enable time remapping. And if you highlight those keyframes, right click them again, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease in. And then if you click this tiny button here that looks like a graph and says graph editor, when you hover over it, surprise, surprise, when you click it, you'll come up with a graph that you can edit. Now, if you've never used this before, uh, it's kind of complicated, but also it's kind of easy, just depending on what you're doing. So what we have here is a curve, and this kind of indicates how fast the footage will be moving, as long as we have the speed graph selected. That's what we want. So if I select this first little square here, and I pull in on this handle, maybe not that much, and then select this little handle down here, and pull you know, also in that same direction, then you'll see basically this is the highest point of the graph that means that's going to be the fastest part of the footage and then it starts to trail off and move very slow so that's the kind of thing you want but the amount of easing can be to your taste so you don't have to copy my curve just use just play with it until it looks good is what i'm trying to say now if we click this graph editor again it'll bring us back to just our normal keyframe view and let's play that and see what it looks like okay so it's doing what we want it's ramping into a very slow speed, starting fast then turning slow. But it starts to get pretty choppy, especially towards the end it's visible. In the middle part, you can't really see the choppiness with your eyeballs, but once you have other elements in there that are not moving choppy, it'll become more obvious and look messed up. So we gotta do something about that. To be honest, in the actual sketch version of this, I use Twixter, but you don't have to use Twixter. There's another way you can do it in After Effects. All you have to do is turn on the frame blending. Now there's two ways you can do this. You could highlight your layer, open up the layer menu at the top, come down to frame blending and select either frame mix or pixel motion. Frame mix is gonna render faster, but it just kind of blends in between your frames. Actually, I could just show it to you. So you see what this does is it kind of does a crossfade between the frames. Maybe if you don't have camera motion or something, this will work for you. But honestly, I find this very distracting. And in most cases, I think it's worse to use this than it is to just not have frame blending at all. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna go up to layer, come down to frame blending and choose pixel motion. Also, I didn't ever have to use that layer menu. I could have just clicked this button down here. This is the frame blending section. So you can click it once to turn on the fading, which I don't like, and twice to turn on the pixel motion, which I think is better. But this works a lot like the motion blur in that it doesn't actually work if you just turn it on. You need to turn it on for the comp too. So that button is right here. So you need to click this button and this button for it to work. And now you can see, especially at the end, it's still not going to be gorgeous, but see, it's kind of trying to interpolate the motion between these drops that are flying off of the gun. And that looks a lot better than just doing nothing. So now we've got our speed ramping done, and we need to get away from this for now and make ourselves a slow motion muzzle flash. So on the Footage Crate website, 
I'm going to go into the explosions tab and we're going to have a little bit of a blast from the past. I mean, these are all blasts, but they're not all from, I guess they are all from some point in the past. I didn't make any of them today. Uh, but we're going to have a blast from the furthest away past we can. We're going to scroll all the way down and as we scroll more load automatically. But we're going to find some of these really old clips just because I happen to like them for what we're doing. And I feel like we're going to have to combine a couple of these in order to make a nice slow motion muzzle flash. I immediately see this one here called the fast aerial explosion. I like it. I don't think it's what I want for now, but you could use it if you think it's going to work for you. I actually think I want to use this aerial sparky explosion. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that real bullets are designed to not make sparks. So when you see bullets making sparks in movies, that's just a stylistic choice. So again, if you're trying to be realistic, don't use sparks. But like I said before, I don't think this is a realistic effect anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. And then I also want to use one of these new fireballs. I'm sure they were new when they were put up. They're not really new anymore, but see, there's two choices here. Which do I like better? That one's pretty good. I'd say this one, new fireball two, has more of the shape of a muzzle flash than the other one does. So I'm going to choose that one. So I'll bring both of those into my project and I'm going to highlight both of them and bring it down to this button here to make a new composition. I'm going to make it a single composition. I don't want to sequence the layers and I'll click OK. All right, so now you're going to see that this new fireball clip, it's a, a 1080p clip, right? It fills this entire 1080p composition. But this one here is not. It's um. How big would you say that is? Let me just check. Okay, it's 720 by 480, so it's not even HD. But, I mean, we're not going to scale it to be this big, you know? We're going to leave it about the size it is or smaller. So, I mean, it's, it's fine to use. It's still going to be an HD effect. So in order to make this muzzle flash, I'm going to turn on the title and action safe just so that I can have this crosshair up here in the middle because right now this explosion kind of moves upward, so I want to counteract that. So I'm going to move to this first frame and put it in the middle of my comp, hit P to bring up my position, and just start going forward frame by frame and moving it as I need to to keep it in the middle. Okay, and also I'm not satisfied with the feathering around the edge, so I'm just going to double click this to put a circle or mask on it so these sparks fade out. But I might keyframe this feathering because I don't want it fading out my middle part here, so... Maybe I'll just set that at zero and that is working for me. Now with this new fireball, it's pretty cool, but I don't want this extra bit of flame at the bottom. So I'm going to scroll forward to where the main fireball kind of separates from that. And I'm just going to draw a mask around that bit of flame. I'll temporarily set my mask to none and I'll keyframe the path and then I'll just move forward to make sure that I have this flame contained. And then I also need to move backward and just kind of follow the positioning of the main part of that fireball. Should be all right. And then I can just turn that into a subtract mask and feather it out. And that's all right. So this is the way I'm putting this together is going to be very similar to the 3D muzzle flash, but it doesn't necessarily have to be 3D. If you didn't see the 3D muzzle flash, it's an earlier tutorial in this series. Right now I'm going to change this new fireball on the top to a lighten transfer mode so we can still see it along with this explosion. And maybe I'm going to retime it. So let's right click it, come up to time and hit enable time remapping. If I highlight all of these keyframes, the time remap and the mask, and then I hold alt as I move the last one, then my mask keyframes will stay put. And I'll drag this end keyframe until maybe the biggest point of my fireball kind of matches the biggest point of my explosion. And that's a little more like what I want. So now I just need to move this fireball into position, maybe scale it down, and I can make it into a 3D layer if I think that it's necessary to, and just rotate it so it's kind of coming forward. Okay, and that is gonna be my slow-mo muzzle flare for now. So let's go back to our slow-mo footage comp and come to where he starts to react. And you don't actually have to put this muzzle flash where he is already pulling back because you could imagine that maybe it actually takes some time for the recoil to kick in. Because again, this is slow motion. I mean, I, I don't really know if that's true or not, but now I can bring my muzzle flare into the composition and just line it up in time and maybe set it to an add transfer mode or a screen transfer mode that looks a little bright. 
I'm actually going to flip my footage over, flip it horizontal because I want the bullet to be traveling in this direction. So I'll also just kind of reframe it. Let's add some reactive lighting on this dude. So I'm going to make a new solid, kind of a, an orangey color, but take down the saturation, take down the brightness. And I'm going to set that to add. I'll move it below my fireball and I'll draw a mask around this person and then also the surface of the water and I'll feather it out real good. Now I'll move to the point where my muzzle flare is the biggest, which is right there. I'll hit T on that layer to set a opacity keyframe. I'll move backwards to bring it to zero and I'll move forwards to bring it to zero. But what about smoke though? Good question, anonymous stranger. Let's go ahead and find some. I'll open up the dust and smoke section and let's see what we have. These could potentially work. I actually like those a lot. I think one of these dust puffs is what I really need though. Not one with a lot of debris and particles in it. Not one that gets cut off by the top of the shot either. Maybe one of these powder bursts. I think I'll use one of these powder bursts. So I'll just go ahead and download this one. And I'll just bring that into After Effects. So I'm just going to add a tint to it because it shouldn't be brown. And I'll turn off the muzzle flash. And it might not need to be time remapped. Maybe it does. I'll just go ahead and give it the same kind of time remapping treatment I gave the footage itself. So I'll enable the time remapping and I'll easy ease those keyframes inward. It actually does go outside the frame, which is no good. So let me just feather those edges out. I actually don't need this clip to entirely resolve. I just need it to get to like here. So instead I'll add my keyframe there. And I'll highlight these. I'll control click them to turn them back into normal keyframes. And then I'll just easy ease them again, easy ease in. All right, that's good. And I'll enable my frame blending, same as before. This is a case where we might be able to get away with the frame mix style of frame blending because it's smoke. So actually, I'm going to leave it like that because it looks fine and it will render faster. So now I'll just get it into position. Now what I like to do to make it look like smoke clips are in slow motion is to actually scale them down at the beginning and then even though they've turned into a freeze frame at the end, just go to the end of the composition and scale it up. So now it's going to keep on expanding but not really moving which in my opinion that makes it look more like it's a slow motion effect. So now we need to add actually the bullet coming out of the gun. So let's head back to footage crate. Let's go into the action and horror section, pull up the 3D action sub menu, and I'll find the slow motion bullet. Here it is. And I'll just download it, bring that into my composition. And I'll turn off my firewall so I can see what I'm doing. What I want to do is move this clip in time until the bullet is kind of the same size as the gun. Not the gun, but the hole in the gun. And then right click it, hit time, and come to enable time remapping. And I'm going to drop a keyframe right there. And I'm going to go forward my end of the clip. I'm going to grab that keyframe and just bring it in so that I can see both of them. I want to put the keyframe that I made right here where my time indicator is. And I want to pull the other keyframe to the end of the composition. So that way I have the bullet, you know, actually exiting the frame. And then I'm just gonna hit Alt in the open bracket to trim my layer to this point. Cool, that was super easy. So now I'll just move it to where it goes and I can move my anchor point right there where that bullet is so that when I come to my end of the footage, I don't really want my bullet this low. I want it kind of shooting up higher so I could just rotate it and then scale it up a little bit so I'm not cutting off that edge. And there we go, I've got the bullet doing what I want to. If I turn back on my fireball, there you go. All right, so I'm actually going to pre-compose that bullet. Control Shift C, pre-compose, moving all the attributes into the new composition. And I'm going to duplicate it and I'll solo my duplicate. And now what I want to do with it is I'm going to try to make that distortion trail that you see behind bullets in slow motion in movies, probably not in real life. So I'm going to start with an echo effect. And I'm going to drop that right on the bullet and I'll turn my number of echoes up a bit and then maybe turn my time my time down a little bit, maybe 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.25. 
I'll change my echo operator to composite in front so that my echoes are behind my bullets. And then I'll turn down my decay so the last one kind of fades away. Cool, and then I can pre-compose this again, Control shift c and I'll call it my distortion map. And I'll bring it to the bottom of my layer stack because I don't need to see it, and I'll poke its eye out because I don't need to see it. And then I'll add a new adjustment layer, and we can call this distortion. And I'll put it below my main bullet, but above everything else. And now I can add a number of effects to it. You could add a displacement map and tell it to use a distortion map as the displacement and then just start turning that up, pull it in the in the direction that you like. That, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Another option is to use CC glass and you can change your surface to the distortion map and then just play with these values until that starts to look good. Either one of those is fine. Um, I did use the CC glass in the original example. This time I think I'll go with the displacement map just because the CC glass takes more finessing to get it to look good. And I'm not one of those tutorial makers that has a bunch of numbers written down on the other monitor and then just plugs them in and then expects you to understand what they mean. I, I really don't like that. I prefer to make everything up on the fly so you can see and understand the process. So now we have those bullet trails. I'm actually going to open up the distortion map again and I'm going to turn my echo time down but turn my number of echoes up and turn my decay up a bit so now I have a more filled in bullet trail here and that's probably a lot stronger than it should be let me just turn that down okay finally I want to add a new adjustment layer and this is going to be our glow so I'll add a glow to it and I want to turn my threshold all the way up so only the white parts of the footage are going to glow. So like this fire is glowing, but the person is not, the plants are not. The sky is, that's an issue, but we'll handle it in a second. So I want to move back to where my muzzle flash is kind of at its biggest. And what I want to do is kind of change the radius and the intensity of this glow until it starts to obscure the bullet. And I'll add a mask to this layer. And then here, where I need this bullet to be covered up, I will set a keyframe on the intensity. And then I'll move back to a point where this flash doesn't really exist much anymore. And I'll turn my intensity all the way down to zero. And then I'll move forward again to where the flash kind of exited the glow area. And I'll turn my intensity down to zero again. And now what this is doing is it makes it, it makes it look more like the bullet is coming through the flash, not so it just appears. However, we can see that it does just appear. So I'm going to actually just trim off the beginning of that layer. I'll do the same for the distortion adjustment layer. So now on the first frame where the bullet is on screen, you actually can't see it. But then it starts to appear through the muzzle flash. Okay, and that's looking pretty good to me. I think that is basically the finished effect. If you want to add some sound to that, we also have a website called Sounds Crate. And I'm here in the explosion section, which is what I think I would recommend. So anything that is like a large explosion, maybe. Or maybe the, a distant explosion. Large explosions are generally distant as well, or really, you know, a lot of just these normal explosions could work. So that's probably what I would recommend. I think a slow motion bullet might sound kind of like an explosion. If you want to see more tutorials like this, feel free to subscribe. If you never want to see a tutorial like this again, then you can subscribe, but just ignore us when we pop up in your newsfeed. And that's going to be it. So thanks for watching my video. I love you. My name is Adrian Jensen, and I'll see you later.